Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fantasy Football Fix YouTube channel. My name's FBL Phillips and welcome back to another quick guide video where we're taking you through the top captain pick, the top predicted points totals and also the best upcoming fixtures to target over the next couple of game weeks all included in this one. It'll be time stamped along the bottom down below so if you've set on your captain or something this week already you can skip over to the upcoming fixtures with little difficulty. Without any further ado, hey, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here. But let's get into things, shall we? And kick things off with the captain discussion. And I imagine for the majority of us out there, it's going to be a pretty straightforward captain discussion this week with Erling Holland having a double game week. But are there any other options to consider? I put Kevin De Bruyne and Bakayo Saka in this graphic to take a look at them and how that kind of underlying data over the last couple of weeks is comparing to Erling Haaland. So we can see the predicted points totals right at the top, which we like to have a look at. You can check out the predicted points totals from every player for this game week and game weeks in the future using the Fantasy Football Fix website. The link will be down below in the description to take you over to there if you'd like to check it out for yourself. But Erling Haaland are coming in, unsurprisingly, up top with 13.1 predicted points compared to De Bruyne with 10.1 and Saka third of the lot with 9.4 predicted points. But live ownership, if you're looking for a differential captain or someone other than Haaland, basically, you're looking at the other two with Erling Haaland's live ownership looking at 95%. So that is the percentage of live FPL teams, so i.e. teams that aren't dead, that haven't been just left alone for five weeks, are the ones that are included in the live ownership numbers. And Bakayo Saka looks the one who's the most differential, but Erling Haaland, it seems difficult to go against when he's got a double game week and 95% live ownership and I imagine near enough maybe even higher effective ownership at your rank with your captaincy and whatnot but the fixtures when we look at them we can have a look at the expected goals conceded which you can see the fourth row down in this table and what that is if you don't know already is the expected goals conceded per 90 so i.e a bigger number means a team's more likely to be conceding more goals and the weaker defenses actually come for those Manchester City fixtures going up against Aston Villa with an expected goals conceded per 90 of 1.44 being the weakest defense of the bunch. We then have a look at the expected goals of each team. Manchester City looking a better attack as of late than Arsenal. 1.98 XG for them compared to Arsenal's 1.87, but not too much in it really. And the expected FPL points previously from the last couple of game weeks, we can see Erling Haaland 7.79 expected FPL points per 90. A very, very nice total for him. So I'm just going to play it simple this week. I'd probably recommend you guys do the same and just stake the captain's armband on Erling Haaland. It could really come back to bite you if you don't. And I think just overall, he is the best captain pick. Not too much point going against it. I know Kevin De Bruyne has just had a rest, but we can see pretty much anyone can get benched in that Man City lineup right now, bar maybe Edison and Erling Haaland. So yeah, I mean, fingers crossed, touch wood that as in the week that Haaland does get benched in this double. But yeah, he will win a game my armband for game week 23. And we mentioned that Holland is top of those predicted points totals, but we can have a look at the entire top 10 as well. But if you'd like to check out the players who are in your side that might not be in the top 10 this week, make sure to go over to the website as mentioned previously. Uh, De Bruyne is in second with Saka in third, so those top three were the options we considered for the captaincy. But the rest of the top 10 is as follows. Martinelli and Inketia in there, despite Martinelli being a bit of a minute's risk now. With Trossard coming in, the early sub is looking like a big risk too, potentially even prior to 60 minutes. We've also got Smith Rowe coming back from injury. So for Martinelli right now, I think he's arguably a sell and he's definitely one you should avoid bringing in. I think there are much better Arsenal triple ups to go for. If you're looking for one, I think Gabriel, Enketia, Saka and Odegaard, those four probably considering. I think most people already own maybe an Arsenal defender, so going for Saka and Odegaard in midfield or, or, or Enketia up front looks good. But he's probably the most at risk of those four because of Jesus coming back from injury. Some things I've said, I've said he's game week 28 is looking like the most likely time. However, I've seen sources suggesting that he might even be back before game week 25. Personally, from what I've read, I think that he's not going to be back until the latter of that. So game week 28 probably. So I think Enketia is going to be safe for game week 25, which is a crucial game week as we'll see in a second because we're going to have to try and navigate the blanks for some big important teams in FPL. 
We've also then got Mares, Odegaard, as mentioned, Edison, Saliba, and then Grealish. So Saliba's actually the top predicted scoring defender of the Arsenal back line, but the price of 5.3 million is quite a bit expensive. Grealish is one that I'm not seeing too many people considering, but could be a decent option. He's been starting a lot of games recently, and with Foden looking out of favour, his place in that team is looking more solid than it ever has been. Unfortunately, his underlying numbers don't quite back up bringing him in, but he could be a nice addition to your side with the fact that there aren't really any Man City players who you can nail down for consistent minutes right now. Grealish could be a nice little differential if you'd like to go there. Predictive points for him of 7.0 for this game week. But nothing too much else to note out of the top 10 there. As mentioned, you can check out all the predictive points over on the website. But now we come to what I think is the most important section of this video. The upcoming fixtures for the next couple of game weeks where we have the new announcement of a double game week in game week 25. Where we'll also have the blanks for Manchester United. Brentford, Brighton and Newcastle, some very important teams for FPL. And now many people are rushing in saying, let's play the free hit this week, or I've seen some people definitely suggesting it. I think there will be more important game weeks down the line. Namely, game week 28 looks like it's going to be a reasonable size blank, but game week 32 as well, due to the fact both game weeks will clash with the next two rounds of the FA Cup. They're going to be very important, and I think you should try your best to save the free hit for then and just navigate game week 25 with your free transfers you've got going into it now and also maybe a hit if you do need to take it. But I definitely would stress saving the free hit is the priority. So if you are looking to transfer out, you know, Newcastle players, you've got an excess or Manchester United assets, who should you be going for, basically, is what we're going to have a look at here. Well, over the next couple of game weeks, Arsenal come in up top for the attacking upcoming fixtures. They also come in up top for defensive fixtures, as you can see. We've split it up into that attacking and defensive wise, as always. Due to the announcement of their new double game week in game week 25, that puts them right at the top, even before they were at the top. So, with a double game week in game week 23 and in game week 25, it looks imperative that we get a triple Arsenal set up into our teams if we can. We've then got Wolves who come in as well, another team with a recently announced double game week 25. They're top for the attacking fixture difficulty, and not the second, sorry, and fourth for the defensive fixture difficulty. However, with Wolves not looking too great going forward, I'd be more looking at a defender to bring in. Maybe someone like a Dawson. Bueno looked a popular option. Unfortunately, he wasn't featuring in the last game. So we might have to look elsewhere in that Wolves back line rather than going for the 3.9 million man, which is unfortunate for people who already do own him. But Wolves' defence probably looks like the best place to target. The same goes with Everton, really. They're third for the attacking fixture difficulty, but fifth for the defensive fixture difficulty. And you can see Tarkowski, who's pictured in the slide here. I think he looks like a fantastic option at 4.2 million. Back in his time at Burnley, he was actually pretty good on the bonus points. And I could see him being the same in Sean Dyche's new Everton side. And with some decent fixtures coming up, and Dyche always works solid on those defences and how many clean sheets they look like they might be able to keep, I think we could see a big improvement in Everton. And once again, they're another team with a double game week just announced for game week 25 and they look pretty well they're, they're set to play in game week 28 Everton whereas Wolves are only pretty likely to play in game week 28 so I'd be prioritizing an Everton defender most likely so we can try to navigate game week 28 without the free hit and save it for game week 32 ideally down the line if possible. Making up the rest of the top five then for attacking fixtures, it's Liverpool and then Man City. Liverpool, another team with a game week 25 where they will double. Nunes and Salah, really the main options, whether we can go all that way and bring them in again with the poor form that Liverpool are in. I'll leave that for you guys up to decide. It might be a bit of a bigger discussion nearer the time. And then Man City, as mentioned, we just don't really know where to go right now, especially with the attackers. I think most people have Erling Haaland, of course, but then Kevin De Bruyne, Mares, Grealish, as discussed. It's very difficult to pick the rest of the players. And the same with the defenders, as you can see. Man City, third for the defensive fixture difficulty. Rico Lewis at 3.9 million could be a decent option. He got like the full 90 for the first time in a while, I can remember, in the last game that Manchester City did have. So 3.9 million looks pretty decent. Ake or Akanji also look relatively nailed with Cancelo's departure. So I think Man City defenders might be the way to go. But I said, Everton, Wolves, these teams are nailed on for game week 25 with a double game week, which gives them the slight edge over Man City after this week and then game week 28 we've got to consider who has got the most likely blanks and who's most likely to actually have fixtures Everton are one of those teams confirmed 
Same goes for some other teams like Arsenal and Newcastle. But it's going to be tricky to navigate Newcastle with Game Week 25 being a blank before they play in Game Week 28. So yeah, it all comes down to some tricky navigation. Let me know what your transfer plans are down below in the comments. And if you have any questions regarding your teams and your setups and what transfer plans you should be looking at with the chips left available to you, then feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back and help you guys all out. But thank you very much for tuning in to this week's Quick Guide episode. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please drop a thumbs up down below to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video and i'll see you guys tomorrow for eddie versus the algorithm thanks very again goodbye